speculators trimmed their net oil longs to 332,000 as Trump calls for lower oil. That is from Holger. This is a chart from the 28th of September, Brent crude. We've now it, we're now above $83. Um, so it's been a tremendous run higher this year. And my piece over the weekend was Brent crude at a four-year high. The world consumes 100 million barrels per day, more than twice what it was 50 years ago. If we use a price of $80 a barrel, that equates to $8 billion a day, $2.92 trillion a year, and that's a raw number without any value addition. And this is real cash, and why Richard Kapuczynski wrote in his book, Shah of Shahs. Oil kindles extraordinary emotions and hopes, since oil is above all a great temptation. It is the temptation of ease, wealth, strength, fortune, power. It is a filthy, foul-smelling liquid that squirts obligingly up into the air and falls back to earth as a rustling shower of money. He also wrote, oil creates the illusion of a completely changed life, life without work, life for free. Oil is a resource that anesthetizes thought, blurs vision, corrupts. The history of oil did not start in February 1945 when Roosevelt met King Abdul Aziz of Saudi Arabian person aboard the USS Quincy. But the history of the petrodollar did. This grand bargain between the US president and the Saudi king established that oil would always be denominated in dollars. And folks from Saddam Hussein to Chavez of Venezuela, and now the high representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs, Federica Maria Mogherini, have all sought to break the chokehold of the petrodollar. Mogherini announced that uh, Europe would create a special purpose vehicle, a legal entity to facilitate legitimate financial transactions with Iran, and this will allow European companies to continue to trade with Iran in accordance with European Union law. I said, good luck with that, Federica, but at least she showed willing, which is as far as it goes. While Western powers have been practically religious about how they characterize oil wars as being nothing of the sort, you will recall Wolfowitz, who when asked why a nuclear power such as North Korea was being treated differently from Iraq, where hardly any weapons of mass destruction had been found, the Deputy Defense Minister said, let's look at it simply. The most important difference between North Korea and Iraq is that economically, we just had no choice in Iraq. The country swims on a sea of oil. On Friday, Brent crude surged to a four-year high above $83 a barrel. The market is anticipating the U.S. sanctions on Iran in a November guillotine. At its 2018 peak in May, Iran exported 2.71 million barrels per day, nearly 3% of daily global crude consumption. Trump has proven a sanction warfare specialist. In fact, his intrusive, coercive, economic and sanction warfare strategy is surely his signature success of what has been an otherwise freewheeling U.S. administration. Venezuela, which was another big supplier, is imploding, the market is tight, and the total CEO is now calling for triple-digit oil prices. This is a double whammy for many emerging markets, strong oil, weak currencies, with India and its Prime Minister a sitting duck, for example. Trump has become increasingly strident about high prices, which is a little cute given that it is his sanctioned warfare, 
particularly against Iran, which has lifted prices. Donald Trump spoke on the phone Saturday with King Salman bin Abdul Aziz of Saudi Arabia, days after the US president's latest criticism of OPEC over high oil prices. Trump has gone after OPEC multiple times this year, including while speaking at the United Nations on September the 25th. OPEC and OPEC nations are, as usual, ripping off the rest of the world, and I don't like it, Trump said in an address at the UN General Assembly in New York. We want them to stop raising prices, we want them to start lowering prices, and they must contribute substantially to military protection from now on. He, of course, is facing a problematic midterm, and the last thing he wants are angry consumers at the polling stations. Therefore, I venture he will be tempted to unload supply out of the US Special Reserve, and therefore bulls need to be wary of a precipitous downside draft on that announcement, which might well wash a lot of people out. That announcement will be the starting gun for folks who have the guts to catch a falling knife because it will prove a momentary and fleeting fire sale. Uh, Bloomberg, with oil at $100 a barrel, what does that mean for the global economy? And they've got, you know, who wins from higher oil prices? Most of the biggest oil producing nations are emerging economies. Saudi Arabia leads the way with a net oil production that's almost 21% of GDP as of 2016, more than twice that of Russia, which is the next among 15 major emerging markets ranked by Bloomberg Economics. Other winners could include Nigeria and Colombia. Who loses? India, China, Taiwan, Chile, Turkey, Egypt, Ukraine are among the nations who would take a hit. Paying more for oil will pressure current accounts and make economies more vulnerable to rising U.S. interest rates. One of the biggest winners might also find itself on the losing end. This is Norway's central banker. WTI crude oil, last trading at $73.50. That chart is from Sun Chart.